Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, dear Mark Donfit, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here. And I listen uh, very sensitive to the last uh, conversation about human rights because I just finished a panel discussion at the CSR conference from the German Labor Ministry, and I was part of the panel concerning human rights, the Ruggie report, and all what will be the consequences for us as companies, but also in the relationship to public sector. I will now, uh, in the next, let's say, 25, 30 minutes, give you some ideas concerning cultural diplomacy. I think uh, there is a strong link between the understanding of cultural diplomacy and uh, also uh, our understanding of responsibility, our practicing of our corporate values. And so I will only give you some ideas. And please don't hesitate to interrupt me, ask your question whenever you may think it is necessary to ask it. I will give only some aspects understanding cultural diplomacy. I will give you some ideas about Volkswagen Group as a global player, our understanding of, as mentioned, corporate policy, uh, of our corporate policy, and will show you some projects. In my understanding, this is a kind of practicing cultural diplomacy, but we can discuss it. Understanding cultural diplomacy, I find a very practical, very pragmatic definition from Milton Cummings. The exchange of ideas, information, values, systems, traditions, beliefs, and, others, and other aspects of culture with intention to fostering mutual understanding. I think everybody of us can agree with this <laughs> definition because it's so general <laughs> and we can find all these things. But I think also there is a very important uh, issue because the understanding of different cultures, the understanding of different mentalities, the understanding of different values and traditions. This is what we need as a global player in our daily work. And if we didn't understand these different cultures, if we didn't understand these different mentalities, it could be, let's say in the word of an uh, economist, it could be very expensive for us when we make the mistakes in the whole world. Uh, in misunderstandings is different cultures, misunderstanding our customers, misunderstanding our employees and all these things. So I will bring you some ideas from our perspective, how we try to understand these different cultures, how we try to understand these different uh, traditions and make use of it. First, some facts and figures concerning our group. Most of you will know Volkswagen Group is one of the leading automotive companies, we had already a very successful year, 2010, and I can tell you the year 2011 will uh, also be very successful and we will running some records, but we now also, there are now uh, some shadows uh, of the economic development for the next year, so we expect some more harder times for the next year, but uh, we have uh, to, uh, already in this year we sold more than 8 million vehicles. We have earned a little bit more money and we are now uh, more than 500,000 employees around the world because somebody of you will, may know uh, we had an acquisition from uh, Lorry uh, company MAN and uh, we have now uh, more than 62 production plants worldwide, and the Volkswagen Group sells its vehicles in more than 150 countries. Therefore, you can understand how necessary really cultural understanding is for a company like ours. And uh, also, it's not only the idea of the employees. You have to take into your account, for example, we have now, let's say, more than 500,000 directly employees for the Volkswagen Group. <laughs> But when you imagine, if you have, let's say, one and a half, nearly two million also employees working for our suppliers, and when you say then all of this employee has a family, let's say, with two or three heads, 
then you can see we are more or less responsible for more than 8 billion people. And I think this means really daily to be responsible for 8 million people. Gives the right salaries, gives the right ideas, give social standards, give environmental standards, give understanding of all these things, gives understanding for the child, for good education and all these things. So I think it's very important to take into your account that it's not only to make business day by day, but also to have a deep cultural understanding of this whole world working in a way I will try to show you. Our production network is, as you can see, worldwide with a lot of uh, sites in all uh, parts of the world, Europe, but also in Asia, South Africa, South America, North America, and so on. We have group values, and I think that is necessary. On the one hand, the deep understanding of the different traditions in countries like uh, Brazil and South America, like uh, countries uh, uh, South Africa or India, but we have also an understanding of uh, corporate culture of our group. And uh, we are many people in many different countries around the globe, as mentioned. And the group values describe what units all of our employees, regardless of their different cultural background and customs, when working for this company. The group values reflect a valid common understanding of our corporate culture. And we have defined seven of these values, closeness to the customer, top performance, creation of value, ability to innovate. I think that's traditional business-driven values, but also respect, very important, responsibility and sustainability. And how we try to achieve our corporate management, our sustainability goals, I don't want to go in detail, but you can see there is a strong link between different departments, between, let's say, our traditional uh, business departments, but also uh, departments who are responsible for compliance, responsible for organizing, for example, avoidance of corruption or uh, misunderstanding of uh, regularities in the different countries. So we have a very strong system with our code of conduct I will show you later uh, to uh, avoid these conflicts. And we have also installed a strong risk management and internal control system. But uh, also we do, uh, besides these more monitoring systems, we have strong emphasis in terms of sustainability with our ecological goals, with our social goals, for example, to uh, have uh, the idea to become the most attractive employer because you all may know, especially the young people uh, in the audit, and I see there are many of them, uh, you have the great chance for the future that you can select uh, how and where you will start your career. And we have to fight uh, to get the best of you, to get the best talents of you for our uh, company. Because you may know, especially in Europe, we are facing a tremendous demographic change. And therefore, it's necessary to be very attractive for the young people and to understand these young people. And therefore, we have installed a lot of programs to make our company, to make our uh, departments uh, very attractive for those young talents. And uh, we have also running a lot of projects in terms of traditional understanding of corporate citizenship. And I will show you there some of these examples, because I think these are obviously signs of our understanding of cultural diplomacy. We are not in an isolated world. We have facing a lot of ideas, a lot of expectations of different stakeholders, our employees, the capital market, politicians and authorities, the old society, and so on. And all these uh, means that there is really a rising complexity for my small department, but all for the other departments, because you can uh, imagine that especially for a 
company like ours, uh, there are a lot of expectations concerning our social standards, our environmental standards, the quality of our uh, apprenticeship, and all the other things uh, close linked by. I will only give some ideas of the understanding of these stakeholders. And for me, to say it a little bit provocative, for me, a very short definition of cultural diplomacy is understanding the stakeholder. And uh, I will only give some of the examples uh, concerning our employees, the civil society, political bodies, and the customers to try to explain how we make use of the ideas of cultural diplomacy, how we understand to be interlinked with this great idea. First of all, I already mentioned it is very necessary that we have a kind of understanding, of common understanding, and this common understanding is on the one hand uh, that we have common group values, as mentioned, but also that we have a code of conduct, a code of conduct which is very high level, it is signed by our CEO and also the chief of our corporate works council. Uh, this is very important for the understanding of the corporate culture of Volkswagen, that we have there a very strong tradition in cooperation, let's say in a kind of co-determination between the management, the board of management on the one hand, and also the work of the uh, works council. And this is uh, sometimes very interesting to try to understand, to bring this, let's say, culture of co-determination from the source in Germany uh, into the other countries in the world, because you may understand that you have completely different corporate cultures in thinking about management, let's say, in, uh, in the United States, but also in Asia or in other countries. So it is so important to find how we can, on the one hand, organize it in a way that we may, that we think we are very successful uh, in the past, but also in the present and hopefully in the future. And this understanding of our kind of corporate culture bring into these other countries without ignoring the specific traditions in these countries. So we have to find there out always a very sensitive balance in these ways. And I can say hopefully, and I have shown you some of the figures, we are running in a very successful way. But uh, I can tell you it is sometimes a very sensitive uh, work to find out always this right balance uh, in the day-to-day -day working. And therefore, it's necessary also not only to have these ideas, but also to have, let's say, a kind of written documents where all these uh, regularities are written down. We have, uh, as I mentioned, corporate culture. It is uh, important for us, for example, that we signed an uh, agreement between our board management and our works council uh, in terms of founding not only a German Works Council, but also a European Works Council, and then we found a Global Works Council, uh, and uh, we signed a social charter. This total social charter uh, had, uh, this is uh, more or less the same idea as uh, you may know, the ILO Convention, and it is uh, written down there, the standard concerning uh, the uh, child labor and uh, forced labor, uh, but also uh, concerning uh, wages and the freedom of association, very important around the world. And uh, after uh, good success with this uh, social charter, we also uh, uh, have an uh, understanding of a charter of labor relations. And this is the idea to fostering the uh, rights of the employees inside our company, for example, there is very uh, uh, different uh, written down regularities concerning the rights of information, 
the rights of consultation and <coughs> the rights of contamination. And you have there write down what means right of information concerning working <coughs> conditions, concerning other things, but also the right of contamination concerning, let's say, wage con uh, uh, negotiations, but also in terms of uh, environmental standards and so on. This is, I think, the heart of the corporate culture of Volkswagen, and it's very important we have such a strong corporate culture, and I think this is one of the reasons to have also then the international success as mentioned. This is only a very small selection of ideas that we are not only working on CSR issues, on sustainability issues, but we bring also these very different reports. And uh, for me, as a responsible for these CSR reports, it's very fascinating to see, uh, so to speak, every day how different is the world running uh, in the activities of Volkswagen. And we report not only in Germany, but we have also to report in South Africa, let's say, in different brands in uh, America. But also, you can see there, I think it's. Uh, it's Spain, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, Mexico, and so on. So uh, what I will show you uh, with this uh, slide is that uh, the idea of CSR, the idea of sustainability, is not only the idea of the middle European thinking, let's say, or the thinking of our German sides. It's really an international thinking. And for me, it's very interesting to see how we can work together with this 500,000 employees, with these different cultures, in terms of CSR with very different projects in this field. And I will show you some of these examples in the second part of my presentation. We are running uh, these projects, uh, as mentioned, worldwide with very different issues. Oh, sorry, sir. I think you missed <laughs> the country. <laughs> it's a completely different picture than here. Uh, there must be a mistake in the computer. You, you have to imagine since this is a world card. And you see that this is South America, this is North America, this is Europe, this is South Africa, and this is Asia. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, I see it's fantastic here. It's a world card, and it works very well. And it's a fantastic slide. But unfortunately, there, we missed some of the information during this. <laughs> but now so you can imagine how. Uh, where the continents are there. And we are now running in terms of regional development, but also environmental protection uh, projects like biodiversity, uh, art and culture, and all these projects. And it's fascinating to see they are very specific. They have to find out and to pick up the ideas of the culture of these countries, of this local environment, and to bring it into our corporate values and that you can then develop a kind of, on the one hand, information platform, but also, let's say, a kind of uh, learning platform. For example, my colleagues in these different regions, in these different brands, uh, there will be about 40, 45 uh, employees in uh, our group. And uh, we organize a meeting uh, one, a physical meeting once a year, but we have a strong exchange also by electronic media. But it's fascinating to see how it works at local level with these projects and how we can organize this in a kind of learning from each other. And uh, you uh, may imagine uh, it's absolutely not our thinking and it's also unfeasible to try to steer, to manage the ideas from a central, let's say, in Wolfsburg or in our headquarters. It is very important to accept that this is very decentralized. This is really the idea of local activities. And uh, therefore, we are uh, very pleased to see how active, how creative all our uh, locations uh, work in this field. I give you only some uh, small examples in this field. And the great idea is help for the self-help. And uh, therefore, I think it's also necessary to say we are running these projects and we are supporting these projects not in the idea because we are very uh, high-motivated, let's say, philanthropists. 
well, we are thinking, we are thinking it's this way, but I think most reason for success is to find the right understanding of these projects in a way that on the one hand, the local environment, the region, the people in this region uh, benefit from these projects, but also the company have to benefit from this. If there is not a so-called win-to-win situation, then it doesn't work for a long time. Therefore, it's very interesting, and we have to define all these projects in a way that we say one reason to create a project, to find a project, is to address a social problem, healthcare, education, support of cultural institutions, and so on. And the other thing is, this must be a part of our corporate strategy. It must be a benefit for us. And therefore, we are running a lot of projects showing in these pictures, for example. And we have a long tradition, especially in South Africa. We have there, and this is very helpful for us, this is very productive for our uh, policy. We have there um, a corporate foundation called uh, uh, Community Trust. And uh, we are organizing all these projects about, uh, uh, in, in, in a way uh, to be involved in this uh, community trust. And this is necessary on the one hand because then all the activities are independent from the uh, independent in, uh, in terms of the uh, actual economic situation. So we have no ups and downs in this engagement and we stop it in a critical uh, year and we expand it in a more successful year. No, we have uh, a clear uh, expenditure for this uh, corporate foundation and therefore they have a solid uh, foundation for uh, working and running projects in the fields mentioned in this slide. And we have also a corporate foundation in Brazil, also now running, I think, since it is uh, 32 years. And uh, I think this means we have really very deep understanding of the different culture from uh, Brazil, from the Brazil environment. And we have there two tasks, education and social development. And over the last years, we have uh, uh, expectable uh, amount they're invested and you can see uh, more than 700,000 school children and students received support in this time and it is a sustainable funding regardless of the result of Volkswagen to Brazil in the same way as in uh, South Africa as I mentioned before. Uh, one of these very interesting project for example in Brazil is a water pump project it is uh, for us very interesting because you may uh, uh, imagine we are more or less a high uh, tech firm because it's my opinion, maybe there are controversial uh, uh, opinions. In my uh, opinion, uh, producing cars is a very high technician work. Uh, you can imagine a uh, car has uh, more or less uh, 15,000 parts and more, so to organize it in a way, I think it's really high-tech working. But it's also necessary to create an, uh, uh, an environment where work, for example, this lower technique, but lower technique in understanding it is, must be very reliable, it must be very robust, and therefore we organized a way with this uh, water pump uh, project in Brazil, and uh, you can see there it, been a, uh, it was a lot of uh, people already who benefited from these projects up to now. And uh, this is one of the reasons that we have really a high reputation in countries like Brazil. And uh, this picture shows you also that we work together with our colleagues here in a very uh, differentiated way. We have there a lot of uh, different materials uh, of, of books, of uh, green books for our employees, but also uh, booklets for uh, uh, different uh, customers and, and, and uh, stakeholders. And uh, this is only one example that you can show. Uh, Volkswagen is not only 
let's say, thinking in terms of German tradition, but it's really thinking in terms of uh, the tradition, in terms of the culture uh, of these uh, countries where we are now active in more than 30 years. And uh, this, see the uh, examples I have shown before, for examples for, uh, let's say, country-driven activities. And this is uh, an example that we have also thematic-driven activities. For example, we have decided that <coughs> biodiversity will be one of the most important upcoming themes for the world, beside climate protection, or to say it more precisely, in our understanding, climate protection and biodiversity are very closely linked challenges for human beings, for the world, uh, facing the next years. And therefore, we are also active in uh, biodiversity projects, and we have defined uh, this in uh, corporate policy. And uh, I have uh, shown you here only some examples that we are running these biodiversity projects, let's say, nearly around the world, for example, uh, we uh, have projects in Brazil and Mexico, but also now in China, in Germany, and uh, even in Japan. Another project uh, created in Germany, but we are now trying to roll it out into our other uh, locations, is uh, corporate volunteering make use of the very specific competences of our employees, but not only of our employees, but also of our retired employees, because it's very important that uh, you make use of also the competences of them. And uh, therefore, we have a, a project in Germany named Pro Ehrenamt or Corporate Voluntary uh, Volunteering and there is a commitment for regional issues in the area of social, school, church, culture, sport, or nature of environmental protection, and so on. Uh, another project, uh, and then I will come to the end, is uh, accident research in China. Uh, you can imagine with the tremendous uh, growth of uh, transportation and cars and so on in, in China, you have also a tremendous uh, uh, increase of uh, the fatality rate, unfortunately, and of incidents. And we have a great experience in uh, accident research in Germany, <coughs> and we have now transferred these competences in cooperation with universities, with local authorities, police and hospitals uh, in China. And this is also a very, uh, uh, very uh, pragmatic project and a very typical project for us because we are addressing a social problem in a country, in this uh, case in, in China, but we have similar running projects now in, in Russia and in India and even in Argentina because uh, you may know in Argentina the fatality rate is one of the highest in the world. <laughs> and uh, therefore this combination I think is very important and addressing a social problem on the one side and to have a benefit in acting as a corporate uh, company on the other side because you can imagine this is uh, also good for the reputation of our company in these markets. And for example, we have also running a special road safety education program in China. And uh, this is very interesting uh, when my Chinese colleagues told me that the idea to transfer a very popular German TV spot into Chinese uh, environment, in Chinese culture, was a very great success. And therefore, you can see their cultural understanding uh, can work very, very well when you accept these different, uh, uh, these different traditions. Uh, but uh, this is an, uh, an, an example that it works very well, and uh, now uh, this uh, education program in China is really very popular, as shown in this slide. The last picture is uh, also the idea understanding the different culture of the customers. For example, you may know that we have a 
uh, Turkish population here in Germany, and the idea of ethnic marketing is that we create a special relationship to this Turkish uh, people, and it was uh, called Volkswagen Speaks Turkish, <laughs> and we have there some uh, marketing instruments, but a, a very important was that we have uh, really uh, well-trained uh, people in our uh, sales houses uh, with a bilingual uh, uh, background so they can uh, go directly in uh, speaking with uh, Turkish speaking uh, uh, people but they were also well-trained in, in Germany and therefore we have a very good atmosphere, a very good uh, ground for uh, understanding in a way uh, in Germany and I think when you See, this is business. To, I don't want to misunderstand, but this is business on the one side. But when you see how uh, critical the discussion is, especially in the last few weeks in Germany, then I think it is more than business. And I think this understanding is important. To act as a business, we do so, but also to have an understanding and cultural understanding. And therefore, I think it is more than business. And I think this is very sensitive, this is very necessary. And I will end with a small film with some other ideas. And now I have the problem how we can activate this film. Maybe, no, this was too far. Uh, no, it, it's this, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, when it works. Uh, I was now a little bit too. If you said uh, can come at this, that would be great. I think maybe. I, I, I will start. I will start. Yeah. Okay, I will start. Coming? It doesn't matter at all. Yeah, the solution is we can try it this way. One second. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, Sorry, we, we, didn't, we didn't realize you had audio. There are only some more uh, examples of running this yeah, project. Oh, so you said, can you help us? Sorry. Okay, this is the master. Uh, no, it's, it's uh, without sound, no. but I think it's not necessary. Let's have a little bit more time for discussion. It's only the idea to show you that we are not active only in some of the countries, as I have shown you in the slides, but we are active uh, around the world. Also fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's nice music. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Pretorius. We really appreciated that. And as I said, it was I think, very much uh, appreciated in particular the viewpoint from the private sector and the specific case look at how actually one major German company is dealing with the issues of corporate social responsibility and or cultural diplomacy. Very happy to take your comments <coughs> and questions. Maybe we'll start in the front row since you're right here and then we'll move right back. Hi, my name is uh, Nils. I'm from uh, Denmark. Uh, this might not be your usual area of expertise, but I'm just very curious. Uh, I've noticed recently that uh, some German car makers have started to use German in their international uh, advertisements, uh, at least in Denmark. Das Auto, and I mm -hmm. think Audi from that's mm -hmm. one as well. Um, and I saw your profit sales, so uh, obviously you could have afforded a translator. So uh, <laughs> I, I was just uh, wondering what the reasoning behind this is. Are you trying to play into some, um, I don't know, uh, perception of? Uh, German culture and tradition of sort of craftsmanship and quality. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, another one, and then I can try to. Uh, 
Hello, Alexander Haskell, Uni University of Zurich. Thank you very much for your presentation. I'm working my PhD on the question of transitional justice. And in this context, let's say in Argentina, as you're certainly familiar with, there is a lot of so class action against especially Daimler bands because what they did during the dictatorship, you thought in South Africa, other legal action or all the debates about the role of companies supporting apartheid, which is also, I think, less uh, VW, but other companies. And my question is, what is what can companies like you do to deal with the past or with the past of your own company support doing these things? Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, two completely different questions, sorry. So, <laughs> but I will try to find an answer for the last one, and then we can come to you. Um, to work with the past means really very different understanding of this past in different countries. For example, some of you may know we have a very specific uh, past uh, in the German history. And uh, you may know, or I can tell you, we were one of the first uh, companies who have uh, very intensive historical research about this history. And you can read it in a very uh, 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 a very large uh, uh, investigation and for example we have now and this is very important to to be aware about this past uh, we have now for example some of uh, of historical uh, points in our company in uh, Wolfsburg for example when you will visit Wolfsburg you can also not only see there the production of the cars and sales rooms and all these things but you can also go there in, uh, in, in, in locations where we have uh, worked with our, we have a special department uh, called historical communication and they are responsible for all these things and you can <coughs> go in very deep discussion with them. And for example, it's for, for us very important and it's just now a fortnight ago that our CEO and our uh, president of the Works Council accompanied uh, 200 apprentices from our company, they go year by year uh, to Auschwitz, Aus uh, how it is spelled? Auschwitz, uh, and work there and prepare their uh, uh, remembering and, and all these things. So we are really very sensitive concerning uh, the uh, work with the past. And it's not only the past 60 years, 70 years now ago. So we are acting really, for example, with our young people every year and every year uh, and, uh, and a number of, of, of these young people uh, goes uh, to Auschwitz uh, and, uh, and, and support the work in, in this field. So this is one of our corporate volunteering. And uh, concerning, for example, the uh, situation in, in South Africa, I say, uh, and, uh, and this is good sometimes to have really also in, in a tradition like this, uh, in, in this case, especially the German car makers, not only Volkswagen, it was also Daimler and it was also BMW, mm -hmm. were really very, very sensitive in terms of apartheid or fight against apartheid. For example, it was allowed the freedom of association uh, in our uh, uh, locations in, in this time. And therefore, uh, you can say the very high, and it's really very high, the very high reputation of uh, our company and the other companies in South Africa is a result of this very honest and very fair politicians' uh, activities uh, during this uh, uh, bad uh, history, so to speak. So, sorry, yes, I had <laughs> forgot your question. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, uh, uh, I, I have no, uh, to be honest, I have no uh, direct information about this. Uh, let's say it was a good or a bad idea from our marketing people. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other questions? Sorry, anything else? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's a microphone. Oh, I, I think it works, uh, no problem. Oh, there is another one. So, please, I, I think it's okay, easy to understand. Ah, okay. Sorry. It's working. It works. 
just push the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, my name is Ahmed, and I'm from Egypt. And uh, I work for an organization called Intercultural Dialogue Association. And uh, um, from your presentation, uh, I'm, 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 I was not liking because I, I only uh, attended the last part. But I, I wanted to ask, actually to ask you uh, about. Uh, you were talking about intercultural understanding, where um, where it fits with the, the customers for Volkswagen or so. Haven't you thought before that, uh, especially after the Arab revolutions in the Middle East area, to um, get a little bit oriented to um, making some projects to promote for the intercultural understanding among or between the uh, Middle East area and the Germany and or or whatever. Um, I mean, ha, to, to adopt some sort of a project uh, from among this area. Mm, to be honest, uh, as far as I know, up to now, not. Uh, it depends on our activities around the world. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, you can uh, see uh, vice versa. Uh, we are not very, uh, we are not in a strong position in the uh, uh, sub-Mediterranean states and in the Arab world, we have only their market shares, uh, let's say about uh, two or three percent. So this will be an upcoming market for us. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, we are not usually involved in these cases. Uh, uh, we are, and, and I think it doesn't it doesn't work. Also, to be honest, it doesn't work when we are now trying to bring it in a way uh, after this. Uh, uh, in my personal view. Uh, uh, really uh, a very progressive uh, 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 movement and development. Uh, but uh, I think it is uh, necessary for us to be really deeply involved in uh, these countries. And uh, I think as earlier you are in these countries, as better you understand the circumstances. Therefore, we are too late in this world, let's say in a very short way. But we were the first one. For example, in South Africa, we were the first ones in Brazil, and we were <coughs> also the first one in China for uh, now uh, 35 years ago. And therefore, I think we have a deeply understanding of the customers, of the employees, of also the environment there. And this is one of the reasons of the success. And therefore, the thesis is right to understand the environment, to understand the people, to understand the cultural tradition is one of the most important reasons for running success in the later. Hi, I'm Elliot Drake from the United States, and um, I'm going to tangent a little bit, but I can't help asking you, just because there's such a big um, member of the private sector in here, um, what do you see as being your influence as a member of the private sector on the German government? <laughs> I think on the one hand, it's very necessary to understand there is a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, labor division uh, in a democratic system. And we have on the one hand the politician uh, sector and on the, the public sector and also the civil society, as mentioned, and you have on the other side the private sector. But you have also a very uh, interlinked system, so to speak, and therefore, we have a lot of understanding of the uh, development uh, in the uh, political sphere. And uh, there is also a strong exchange between the political leaders and the corporate leaders. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, it is uh, necessary to have these arenas for, uh, for, for communication. And uh, this is one side. The other thing is. Uh, as I have shown you, we are a company, not so small, uh, but uh, you uh, have to take into your account there are really in a democratic system uh, also uh, uh, different types of working, and uh, you shouldn't overestimate the influence of a corporate uh, like Volkswagen about concrete political decisions. I think this is also good to have this division of work and uh, to, under to have a better understanding of these spheres, I think is really good and we should try to work to get more better understanding between these different spheres. 
but I think it's also necessary to have uh, also great acceptance of the division of labor, of work. Are there any questions? Uh, good afternoon, my name is Vincent. Um, I'm from Switzerland. And uh, actually I had the opportunity to Um, I had the opportunity to attend a conference uh, given by um, a CSR head, uh, head of CSR program in Brussels a, a few months ago uh, from one of the largest companies in the diamond production. And uh, we're talking about the CSR problems uh, in the supply chain, actually, and not really in the, in the company, at the company scale itself, because um, I think that there, there, are, there have been a lot of improvements at the scale of the company. Mm. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, there have also been a lot of improvements uh, at the international level. You, you mentioned the ILO convention, and uh, now there is the Global Compact, the UN Global Compact, and also I think the European Parliament, who tried to include a CSR clause in the FTA um, mm. um, uh, yeah, free trade agreements yeah. with uh, countries, countries especially from Asia. And uh, so I wanted to know if uh, Volkswagen uh, was involved in this, and uh, how do you see the role of the private sector and the companies? In this issue? Uh, well, uh, uh, supply chain management or supply chain sustainability management is one of the upcoming very important issues and we have installed inside of our uh, company uh, project uh, called <laughs> sustainability in supplier relations and we have uh, formulated very strong uh, social and environmental standards. They are equal ranked to our standards and uh, when you get as a supplier first time in contact with our company uh, about our B2B platform because uh, I think we are now running uh, more than 60 billion euros per year about this B2B platform and uh, when you get first in contact with us you see our environmental and our uh, social standards and we expect from all our suppliers that they are doing this in the same way but you can also, in the, and, and, uh, you can also imagine we have now, let's say, 40, 50,000 suppliers. Uh, it is not easy to manage this process, but uh, we are. We have the idea that say uh, that our social and our environmental standards are part of these negotiations, are part of these uh, connections, and uh, we have also installed, uh, let's say, a kind of a, of a risk uh, uh, monitoring system and uh, therefore we are able to identify weaknesses in this uh, line and I'm uh, personally part of a so-called ad hoc expert team where we are discussing critical issues in this field and our philosophy is not to, uh, to let's say to punish our suppliers but to, to offer help because I think it's necessary most of uh, our suppliers come, let's say, for example, uh, in our uh, locations of, of India, from India, and they are part of the economic development, of the economic impulses uh, in this environment, and therefore it doesn't make sense to show them, let's say, the red card, uh, but it's necessary to offer help for them. This is our understanding, but nevertheless, there are no compromises in our social and our ecological standards. Ladies and gentlemen, let us please take this opportunity to express our gratitude to Dr. Gerhard Pretorius. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.